Hi everyone, this is the first video for the first lesson of exponential growth. So we're doing this after uh, differentiation 2. And if you look, this naturally falls into two lessons. So let's give it a go then. So we've done a, a little bit on exponential. Uh, so let's have a look at this one then. It says. So it says the number of bacteria in a colony, n, after t hours. So you can just kind of see the n there and the t there, can't you? Uh, what do you notice? So it started out at a thousand when t is zero, but when t is one, it's two thousand. When t is two, it's four thousand. When t is three, it's eight thousand. So you can spot that this, the number of bacteria, doubles every hour. So I can write a formula. So it starts off at a thousand. Times by, now I can see it as that one being a thousand times one, a thousand times two, a thousand times four. But I want it in terms of the t value, t to zero, so the, the, the t is our value. So to get zero out, that might be t, to get zero out, I might want um, t to the power uh, zero. And this one, to, oh, sorry, two to the power zero. So that what that zero I can see, I can't remember, I don't know. the zero I can see is two to the power zero to give me a one out. For the 1, I can see it's 2 to the power 1 to get me a 2 out. For the 4, I can see it's 2 to the power 2 to get a 4 out. So if I do it as a 1,000 times by 2 to the power t, when t is 0, it gives me a 1,000. When t is 1, it gives me 2,000. When t is 2, it gives me 4,000. That's what I was trying to get my head wrapped up into that. So then it says, uh, the growth of some quantity is exponential when there is a constant called the growth factor um, so, so it's multiplied by the factor so it's not added it's multiplied by it so for hours the double each hour so it's got a growth factor of two now in terms of the values of the numbers um, they were doubling so it's obvious that isn't it but I might link it to percentages. So if there's a 5% increase, it's now at 105% of what it was. So it's got a growth factor of 1.05. If there was a 10% decrease, it would be 90% of what it was. So the factor would be 0.90, if that makes sense. So it talks about here. So the size of it, so the growth factor is less than one, we have an exponential decay. So if it loses 25%, it's only 75% of what it is from the previous day. So that gives me a factor of 0.75. I hope that makes sense. Right, so let's have a look at an example. So it says, in 1994, there were 5,000 pound positive. And then it goes up by those amounts. So it says, find the growth factor per year. So let's go with... Um, the jump from 1995 to 1996. So I've got 5940 divided by 5450. And that should give me 1.09. So that's part one done. So that's my growth factor. 9% every year. So how much was in the account in 2000? So if I just do the, the 7693 by 12 times by 1.99, that will give me roughly 8385.50. So I'm using the completed facts. So they might be slightly out of the um, So then it says write down a formula for it for years after 1995. So I know I'm starting off with £5,000 in 1994. 
So then I need to multiply it. To get to 1995, I have to multiply it by 1.09. To get to 1996, I have to multiply it again by 1.09. So it makes sense to multiply 3 by 1.09 to the power of t, where t is years after 1994. So this is t is 1, this is t is 2, t is 3. Can you see where I'm going in fine? Just write it down for completeness. There. Okay? Right then, so it says in real life scenarios, such as population growth, the proportional to the size of the population. So we have a thing, we have a constant of proportionality, which is the K. That's a, um, a constant of proportionality. But I'm actually teaching this now with the second year. So you don't see it for another year. What you do with it to move this differential equation into something which looks like that. But we have the, these are kind of like the standard forms that we move towards next year. So they're really important to see now. So one starts at A and goes up, one starts at A and comes down. Right, let's have a look on the next page then. I've got example one there. And I've got example one. Okay, so example one one uh, says, so I'm going to do this example and then I'll stop for the example two. There's quite a few examples in this. But example two really example three? Who knows? Right, so it says the price of a car can be represented by this formula, where P is the price in pounds and T is the age for new. So we'll calculate the new price. So the new price is when T is zero. So P would be 16,000, that's a very, very cheap car, E to the power of zero. E to the power of zero is one. So I bought the car for 16 grand. A brand new car for 16 grand. That's not bad. And then for five years, I'm going to look at it for T is 5. So P is 16,000. E to the minus 5 over 10. So I put it in my calculator and I get 9,704.49. So, so what uh, what the model suggests about the eventual value of the car. So as T gets massive, eventually P is going to be zero. So it'll tend to zero. So then it says, give a reason why this value for the eventual value may not be accurate. Well, does it go to zero? We'll probably get a scrap value, don't we? So we've got some form of scrap value. Going on, get something for it, and then it says do a sketch of it. So I've got an exponential decay which started off at 16,000, so that's P and that's T, and that's me done for this vid. I'm